Let's open with prayer, and then we'll go over our quiz from last week. Father, thank you for uh, the afternoon. Allow us to have um, wisdom in knowing how to uh, properly understand the Scripture, to rightly divide by word, so that we may apply it to our lives and be able to be an encouragement to other people uh, that that would bring across our path. In Jesus' name, amen. Mm -hmm. All right, so let's uh, let's look at this quiz here. Um, I understand there was probably some confusion with some of these questions, but we'll make the confusion less confusing, probably. Um, if anyone wants to join the class, please give us a phone call at um, 856-854-4747. I think in the past we had some people join, but I think they may have uh, just to watch you now. I'm not sure what's happening with all these people that used to watch or used to participate with by way of phone. But we still want to hear from you, so there's the phone number. Give us a call at 856 um, 856-816-7839. Uh, uh, That's 856-816-7839. We'll be, uh, be looking forward to looking to hear from you uh, sometime, uh, sometime today. That'd be, that'd be nice. If that's possible, it may not be possible, but we do um, want to hear from you. Maybe this is uh, somebody coming by right now to the class. That'd be nice. Uh, I'm not sure who it is, but we'll see. Hi, Mrs. Weber. Mrs. Weber. Yes, we are. We are. Good to, good to have nice you to back. Have you here. So we just, start, we just started the uh, to go over the quiz. We haven't even started yet. I have a. Uh, I have one here if it's the same. Oh, that's the verses for this week. Uh, Number 36. I have it, yeah. Number 36. Okay. okay, that's great. Oh, is your mom she, coming? Uh, she might be coming. She's um, she had somebody that stopped by oh, okay. to, uh, to pick up. They were just talking. Oh, okay. So she's. I will. And when they Maybe. stop talking, she'll probably come. Okay. So, uh, so let's uh, do number uh, one, Bill. Question okay. number one. On the back of this quiz, write Matthew twenty six fifty three. Thinkest thou that I cannot now pray to my Father, and He shall presently give me more than 12 legions of angels. All right, and then, Tammy, you want to do number two, please? Sure. It says, how many times are Old and New Testaments combined? Well, they're never combined, but <laughs> they, I think you were asking how many times the um, word uh, angels yes, are so referred I was. to. Uh, how do you know? And mm -hmm. both of them combined, but I, I did uh, them separate. From, uh, okay. Oh, and okay. then, if you want me to add them, okay, add do them, them. do them separate and then add them for me. Okay, so the Old Testament was mentioned 108 times, and the New Testament 165 times. So altogether, it's um, 273 times. How many you get for the Old, uh, Old Testament? 108. And how many for the New? 165. Okay. You came up with uh, somebody who wants 273, right? 273. Good. That sounds that sounds better than the answer I came up with. Right. What did you? No, I don't. So I, I, I must have had some uh, <laughs> formulated the question incorrectly. I uh, also um, <laughs> seem to have a problem adding myself. Uh, it, st it stopped me too. This question. So the answer is 273. And um, Bill, go ahead with the next question there. Who said the Lord rebuked thee, Michael? Michael. Yes, that's right. And, um, oh, Dan, I don't know where we are. Oh, we're in question number four. You got the wrong one anyway. Oh, you might be uh, eschatology. Uh, here's one. You got uh, the wrong here's one. A, here's one. Tammy was trying to tell me, but I thought I... That, that's I, just the verses for today. I have one He's here. got oh, a quiz. Oh, oh, thank you. For today. All right, so what number are we? We're number... Um, uh, four. 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 Okay, to whom does the phrase Son of God reference? I would think it would re reference Jesus Christ, Son of God. In, in chapter... I'm not sure, though. Well, that's um, Sons of God. Oh, Sons plural. of God. Oh. Yeah. Would probably in, mean... The okay. subject that we were studying last week. Which was angels. Oh. So in some cases, in some cases, the Sons, sons of God... Uh, refer to angels. Uh, oh, okay. In the examples that were cited, we went over. Um, like in, in the Old Testament. In Genesis, Testament. in the Old Testament, yes, that's right, in the Old Testament. All right, Tammy, go with the next, uh, the next question there, please. To whom are angels sent forth to minister 
To those who will inherit salvation. That's right. The heirs of salvation. That's who they are, they are sent forth to, to minister. And, um, Bill, question number six, please. What is the ordinary form of angels? Spirit. Yeah, it's ordinary form of angels. They're, they're spirit. All right, so what the next one? Oh, can I just stop for a minute? And yes, ask, please. Ask a question. Uh, do they sometimes appear in a bodily form? Like sometimes they'll have the appearance in bodily form, like yeah. with, with with Daniel, with uh, with Mary, with yeah. the Annunciation, with Joseph, yeah. and with Abraham. Um, yeah. They're they they have the and, and sometimes we said in the Book of Hebrews we entertain uh, angels Unaware. uh, unawares, and so. Um, Sometimes they will take the appearance of, of a temporarily in bodily form. They could be identified and recognized by, by people usually. And sometimes even in our life there could be an angel that yes, came along and helped me. That, right. Or mm -hmm. someone else here and we right. wouldn't even know who they were. You know. That's correct. And it's, it may be in a mm -hmm. scary situation. Yes. Or, mm -hmm. Okay. That's, that's right. And they do it with, of course, with the, uh, with, with the, with the I already said this, but with the shepherds in the field. Yeah. Heavenly hosts came. Yeah. Uh, they, may have, they may have been in a different form. Right. They were still in some type of form that was identifiable. I mean, they were, in the form they took in, in the, when they were with the shepherds, the shepherds were afraid. I'm right. not sure if they were afraid because they just, they were afraid. Well, I guess yeah. you would be afraid yeah. against all these angels. Okay. Tammy, um, Tammy yes. what uh, number uh, am I? Be before you give your number, what's your question, Tammy? I'm Remember sorry. Please. I just was going to comment about last night's Bible study because we were talking about the two men that were standing there after the Lord Jesus ascended, and he said, yes. it, yeah. they were, it said men in, in the King James, but it said in brilliant attire or something, mm -hmm. you know, about their clothing having a, a, a luster to it or something, yeah. um, which after would the, identify them as angels. After the ascension, right? After the ascension. Yeah. Yes. Right. That's right. Um, I go, what's your garment sweater? Your uh, seven? Now let me uh, yeah, go number seven. Mm -hmm. Okay. What is the name of the heavenly being who helped Daniel understand his vision? It could be Jill. It could be Jill, yes. I don't know. Who is it? Gabriel. Okay. I'll tell him I got the answer. Oh, chief. Okay. Hello? Hi, Jill. How are you doing? Well, hi, Dan. Good. How are you? Hi, Jill. I'm glad hi, Jill. you're here. Hi, Jill. Hi, Jill. Hi, Jill. Hi, Hi, Jill. Right. Oh, it's Tammy. It's Tammy. Mrs. Weber. Mrs. Weber Hi. and Bill and, and of course, uh, I'm here as well. Thanks, Joe. Uh, I really wish that Glenn would tell us one thing. I could <laughs> we, um, I'm, glad you, I'm glad you called, Joe. I heard you were um, you had, had, a, had a little bit of cold or something, and you didn't want to come and uh, share it with everybody here. That was very thoughtful of you. Sure. You know, please play another uh, situation. Uh, just, uh, just play. Uh, we have a uh, leak in our roof, which is not, not helping matters. Oh, really? Yeah, that, that could be attributed to uh, the cold hanging in there, or uh, uh, unpredictability of the cold. <laughs> yes, that's, that's, it's, not, it's not good at all, Jill, to have a, uh, a leaky roof. I mean, is it going to be a uh, remedy, do you think? Yeah, I know. We have to uh, get the insurance company in mm -hmm. here. And yes. We had that problem before, too, in the past. But please, you know, pray yeah, for us that we okay. get that, hopefully, hopefully and permanently rectified. Yes, that, 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 that's, that's <laughs> yeah, needed. Thank mm -hmm. you. Okay. I miss whoever. Go ahead with the, the question there. Oh, shall I read it again? Yes, please. What is the name of the heavenly being who helped Daniel understand his vision? And I did ask the bill. He said Gabriel. Gabriel. I didn't want to That's right, Gabriel. Okay. Or anything. No, no, you weren't. You weren't. <laughs> <laughs> All, right. All, right. All right, Tammy, go ahead. Number eight. According to Bancroft, what gender are the angels? They're males or they're masculine? Yes, that's right. And Jill, um, go ahead with the uh, question number, uh, what's it, nine? something mankind can never be and why an angel because we receive redemption and a higher place with Jesus yep. we are distinct they're, they're, they, they, God did, Christ did not redeem and come to redeem the angels he just came to redeem there's actually redeem a, lot humanity. Of, a lot more reasons too. yes there are well you give, yeah. give some more that well, are, one is uh, yeah. that we are born in sin yes we are uh, and uh, we can be uh, saved Angels yes, can. cannot be saved. No. Once they fall, that's that's it. Mm -hmm. uh, but we were uh, created through uh, uh, 
you know, through the normal process yes. uh, he, that God set in motion here on earth, mm -hmm. whereas uh, the angels were created one at a time right. directly by God. Mm -hmm. That's right. That's right. One at a time. Um, let me see. And Mr. Weber, take the next question, that please. What has been prepared for the devil and his angels? Hell was prepared for the devil and his angels. That's right. Yeah. Hell, the uh, fires, yeah. the last few fires of hell has been prepared for the yeah. devil and his angels. Tammy. What is one thing which angels are not and one thing they are? They are a company, they're not a race. Is that what you're looking for? Yep. Yes. Uh, I hear that first part. I was, they I are saying, a company. Oh. They're not a race. Oh, okay. Because they weren't born. They right. were created. Mm -hmm. All right. And um, number uh, 13, Jill, please. Who stands in the presence of God? 119. <coughs> Gabriel the angel. All right. That's right. Gabriel. Gabriel stands in the presence of God. And Bill. Go ahead. What does the name Michael mean? Who is like God? Who is like God? That's correct. That's what Michael means. And uh, Mrs. Weber, take the next question, please. Uh, how many did Daniel see stand in before the Lord? How many did Daniel see stand before the Lord? I think it was three, wasn't it? And another like. That was um. We're, I think you're. We're getting um. The question's getting mixed up with Chad, uh, with Hannah, and Michelle, and Hazrera. Oh. This is with Daniel, Daniel in, in uh, see, Daniel seven ten. Stand before the Lord. I'm not sure. Dave, what, what do you come up with that number? A hundred million. Oh, I didn't know that. Yes, 10,000. That? 10, That's right. When was that? On uh, Daniel 7 10. Oh, okay. Are they angels um, or people? Um, can we look at that? Yeah, let's look at that. Let's turn to Daniel 7 and verse 10. Daniel 7 to 10. Joel, you want to read uh, Daniel 7 to 10 for me, please? If this is uh, angels or uh, the redeemed, what 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 were you thinking, Tammy? Well, it just sounds like the great white throne. It does. It does. Yes, it does sound like the great white throne, doesn't That's it? That's why I'm thinking oh. it's people, but yes, mm -hmm. it's the thousands, thousands ministered unto him. That's referring to the angels, and ten thousand times ten thousand stood before him. Mm -hmm. Maybe the the people that were being judged. Yes, it could be. So there could have been angels and people. Yes, there could have been a mixture of both. Mm -hmm. Mixture, mixture of both. And let me see who's uh, let me see who's the number fifteen here. Mrs. Weber, you did fifteen or Tammy? I did it. Oh, Tammy did fifteen. Go ahead with uh, Jill, uh, number uh, sixteen, please. In what condition were angels created? Be able to three, three, holy. Yes, they were created in a holy state, holy condition. And Bill, number seventeen, please. What are heavenly beings saying to one another? Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. Okay, that's good. And um, Mr. Warburg, number 18, please. Now, what is the meaning of the Greek word angelos? Is that, am I saying that right? Yeah, mm -hmm. angelos. And angelos and the Hebrew word malachi. Well, angelos sounds like it would mean angels. Angels, that's right. But I don't know about the that, other how. That's how with some... Um, we translate it as angel. We translate the, the mal ak as a, as angel. Oh, same. And what what is what an angel is is a, is a, is a one that is sent, one that's a messenger. Oh. And so that's um the what an angel is. Yeah. One who is a, a messenger. Yeah, I knew that, but I didn't. Right. I thought it was. I yeah. don't know what I thought it was. Right. So we we do translate it 
as angel both times. Angel these these but one's said, Greek, oh. one's Greek, and one's Hebrew. But, oh, okay, but it really means the same thing that you're saying. Yes, it means, the, it means the angel, which means messenger. Or Greek one, and Hebrew. One oh, okay, mm -hmm. that's correct. Well, thank you for explaining so that's, that. That's correct. Uh, Tammy, next question there, please. Who shouted for joy in Job 38:7? The sons of God, and they were angels. Okay, sons of God, and then um, Joe, take that last question, please, number 20. On the back of this quiz, write something you learned that's for from the sons of angels. Mm -hmm. um, Said yeah, uh, though created holy, angels could still choose to be loyal to God or follow Satan in his sin for which they could mm -hmm. not be redeemed. Right, right. Uh, Mr. Weber, anything you want to add to that as far as um, some things um, we know about angels? <coughs> well, sometimes there could be one that you wouldn't know it was there. Right, that's right. Mm -hmm. that's right. I've had a couple of instances where. Somebody just appeared out of like nowhere, and mm. I sort of. Yes. One day I, I was, One time I was going to Philly to find this girl. It was her fiftieth wedding anniversary, mm. her and her husband, and I got lost. And I pulled up to this guy to ask the directions, and he was a little odd looking or something. All of a sudden, this girl came. It was a girl though, and, I, and another friend, a lady, a girl with her. She, vroom, she just in there like, and I turned to her and said, "I'm lost." And she gave me the direction. I was on my way, mm -hmm. but it was a woman, so it couldn't have been an angel because they're mm -hmm. they're men, right? I mean, perhaps they could take yeah. on the form of a I woman. Don't know, I don't know. That's, that's, that's and there's true. been other times. I don't know. I, I don't know. I mean, yeah. if they if they would ever take on the form of a woman, usually we see them in most cases that we know about in scripture take, are taken upon the yeah. form of a man. Yeah, I mean, just there, man, there's been other times, but mm -hmm. it just. Uh, we never know when it's someone. Because well, we, 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 we do have angels that look over. Right. We went, We don't suspect. No. You know, I mean, we don't suspect men or, or women to be angels. But right. You don't even think about it at the time. It yeah. could have been an angel, but yes. uh, we do have angels, right? right. We have them. Well, yeah, they're, 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 they're ministry spirits. They're yes. They minister to us. Yeah. And they're they are watching. You mm -hmm. know, they are, you know, it talks about different things because of the angels. It talks about other scripture does, other things about the angels. Tammy, uh, wait, do you want to add to anything that Joel said and Mrs. Weber or what Bill said? Well, I was just, I just was impressed by the, the, the two different um, Hebrew words, mm -hmm. um, the Benai Elohim and the Benai Jehovah, oh, yes. which is sons of sons of God, and uh, you know it's, um, you know, mm -hmm. basically showing that that's, um, you know, there's anytime the sons of God was used in the in the Old Testament, there it was it was. Um, they were angels. Mm -hmm. so. Yes. Okay. That's good. Yes, that, that is a good observation. Uh, so we're going to continue our study. I think we're three three classes on angels, and it's our second class on the study of angels. I have a, a, qu a quick question, actually. Yes. Um, mm -hmm. I'm just wondering, like on page three twenty, where it says, um, "Beings of various ranks and orders, and it's a, co a company, not a race." Okay. So, um, does that mean? That means that they don't—they're not like okay, black, white, Chinese, Asian, etc. They're just—we don't—we wouldn't notice them as races at all. I, I would think. To like I think which you have different races. They just are a company or uh, innumerable in amount. Yeah, I think what uh, what's mentioned by company, mm -hmm. probably as a race, as opposed, to, they're they're a company. They're not a race. Uh, not necessarily. They're they're not. A, a race of people, I mean, 
in general, I mean, we, even when we go beyond just the, just the, the what we what we've broken down is different races. You know, we have the, um, you know, the Asians, and we have a, uh, Caucasians. You know, all these different types of and breakups of, of of what we call the races. Uh, the, the races are are, are can be. Uh, identifiable can reproduce, can do all these different things, and they, they're, they're, they're identifiable in a certain way. Whereas the angels are just, just a company, they were all created in the same day, at the same time. It's, they're, they're, it's a company of angels, and a race is something that has a lineage. I don't question that. Sure. When, when, like a certain time they appear in human form, right? But, but we can't, I wouldn't normally think, okay, well, they don't always appear as white or black or whatever, but I guess that could mean, imply they can appear as any race, even though in heaven they're not a race. I'm just trying to understand. Oh yeah, you see, Joe, yeah, when they take on the form of a human being, yes, then they, they will look like part of humanity. But they can be anything, whether black, white, Asian, it can be any race that God chooses them to take on form on, on earth, but in heaven they're not known as races. It might be Understand that correctly or not? Yeah, I, I think right. they're yes when they when they when they when they, when they, when they, they take only, yeah they only have physical form when they appear here on earth. Yes, their right. normal uh, condition is spirit only, which uh, has no uh, no physical form that we can see. Yes, that's right. That's right. Well, we wouldn't know the black. We don't know like, when they take the physical form on earth. That, so that, that they take on the form that's that required. Oh, in the flesh. We wouldn't know, a lot of times we wouldn't even know, you know, um, that we were in the midst of an angel, much less what race they were. I mean, the fact is, I guess, what race might be irrelevant. I was just something out of my own curiosity, that's all, okay. when they take human form. Tim, go ahead, we'll be sure. I mean, I think that whole idea of a race is, you know, there, there was Adam and Eve, and they, they had children, and then from them, they, their children, there were more children. And it's like a lineage, like you were saying. Mm -hmm. And it's not about a, a, a color of skin. It's not about what we think of as race. That's not what he's saying. He's, he's talking about a, a race, meaning um, they were all created as individuals, each of these angels. They weren't born of mm -hmm. some, someone else. They were, they were created by God. I already know that part. I just didn't know if they could take on the form of, like, I'm not saying a whole race, but when the individuals were created by God, not in the mother's womb, if they could take on somebody who's black or somebody who's white, maybe I'm not, you know. Yeah, I, I think so, Joe. Like, like uh, I'm not sure you probably... You know, uh, <laughs> last night... Whatever is required. Did, did you hear what, what Joel... I mean, probably, did, Joel, did you hear what Tammy was saying? Yeah, I did. And I understand yeah. yeah. very clearly what she was saying. I, I think what you're... not like... My point. Yeah, your, qu your question <laughs> is. <laughs> no, no, I'm sorry. I understand, I understand your question. Last night, the Bible study at the at the Mount of Olives during the at the time of the ascension, um, the two men said, asked the in white apparel, asked the apostles, the eleven apostles, the men of Galilee, why stand you gazing up to into heaven? The same Jesus which was taken up from you shall also return in like manner. I'm, I'm getting, getting to more of a paraphrase now. What the text the passage says. But um, the, the the point the point being is, they 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 were, yes they were white right apparel but they were men that looked like they belonged there, so they looked like Israelis. Yeah, yeah, okay, now I understand. Yeah, so, yeah, thanks for clarifying that for me. That's so, okay. so so an angel. Yeah, just people like that. Yeah. An angel that's gonna it's gonna that's gonna come, a minister, who 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 is or will minister in the area where we live. They will look like people that. Live around here. Mm -hmm. yeah, Whether we that's know. Good. That's a good yeah. clarification. Thank you. Tammy. Doesn't that kind of relate a lot to what Mrs. Weber asked about whether, you know, they could take on a, a form of a, a woman? Yes. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, I don't really see a whole lot of distinction as far as a different race or a, a man or a woman. Right. Except that, like you said, the scriptures don't specifically say right. that they ever, you know, it doesn't say these women. Um, so I don't know. Right. But yeah, we don't have an example of them taking on a form of a woman, mm -hmm. but I would think there there may be some cases when they would. Uh, 
in the case if they, if, they, if they have to fit in, if it's uh, suppose it's an all girls school, and all they all girl, I mean, in, in a rare in a rare instance, and I'm not sure if the, all the girls schools have all the, the girls schools have all women teachers or not, but um, and if they have all women maintenance people, but it's it's, it's difficult to say. There, there's well, a even even with Mrs. Weber's situation, yes. it seemed like the <coughs> yes. person that that was there, that man, was somewhat. Frightening, yeah, it was. you know, yeah. and so maybe the whole idea of putting, you know, I, I, I'm just, just using girl. my imagination. Yeah. But I mean, mm -hmm. if they were, you know, specifically not wanting to scare you, you know what I mean? As far yeah, as they would, they would take I don't know, I'm just making it just seems so uh, like quick and and all, and I just right. like they just seem to appear out of nowhere. Right. And, and she were definitely going. took the fear. Yeah, she did. Away. She told me where to go, and yeah. she, mm -hmm. I went, yeah. and then they mm -hmm. followed. You know, they went up. Yeah, it could have been just a person, but I mean, right. yeah, you never know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I just thank the Lord that He has angels to watch over us. Yeah, that, that, that's the interesting thing, you know. We may have seen angels uh, from time to time and not know it. That's right. That's right. That's right. angels unaware. That's right. What the, yeah. what the scripture says: we may not know it. We may not know it. That's correct. So, um, in in our in our, let's look at the. Uh, text today. Now we're going to get into his very special, sp 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 <laughs> a specific angel, a Lucifer, uh, who who wanted to be like God, and this is what caused his downfall. Um, and this is the, uh, what role does he play? He's, he's trying to undo everything that God has done, but he will ultimately fail in his attempts uh, to do this. We're on this now. Um, for peace. Thank you. 3.26. And Joel, you were able to find the scripture passages there online? Yeah. Um, actually, I'm sitting at my kitchen table now. Um, uh, I, I keep going, um, it's not good. The computer room has, that's where the um, hole in the roof is. <laughs> oh, okay. But well, I have the other, oh, goodness, the other um, scripture verse that came in is not enough to send me in the mail. That's right. It says on the top of okay. class number 30, Angelology, I, but I'm just not online. Is it Daniel 8, 15 to 17? Is that... What it is? Uh, this is for class 37. It's um, yeah, John 13, two. But um, we'll we'll um, we'll, just, we'll we'll be patient with you, Jill, with with the verses, and we can read them um if you don't have them, okay? <coughs> okay. Uh, I'm sorry, Daniel 36. What verse is that? Uh, we're the first verse. <laughs> no, no, we're um, we're in the, the part of the verses that Tammy sent you were from last class. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it says Angelology, the Word of Angels, page 316 to <coughs> 326. I have those scripture verses in front of me. <laughs> it's the, the scripture verses we need is for our Angelology, uh, class 37, pages 326 to 337. Oh, I don't. You don't have those. I, I don't have those. Okay. Now. All right. Well, well, um. Yeah. yeah. I can look up what you want me to. Okay. Well, um, when, when it's time, we'll, we'll, we'll deal with that. Okay, Joe? Um, we'll do that. Okay. So, what he says here on page uh, 326, he says, The subject of Satan takes us into the realm of spirit and thus out of the realm of matter. This makes impossible investigation or an in inquiry by means and methods used in material sciences. Reference for such questions must be limited to the scripture, which are the final court of appeal in all such questions. Now, as far as his existence is concerned, we know that he exists. Um, John 13, 2, Bill. Okay. And supper being ended, the devil having now put into the heart of Judas Iscariot, Simon's son, to betray him. Now, you see, we can't, people, the people are people that want to deny the existence of Satan. They want to deny the existence of God. They want to deny a bunch of existence. But particularly, certain people don't want to think there's a Satan that exists. Well, they want to classify him as a fairy tale, as a fable. Mm -hmm. But but here we know, in this particular instance, that Satan himself possessed Judas. After supper, after supper was ended, after the Passover, perhaps, you know, what's the, today's Friday? But... But, you know, however many, over 2,000 years ago, during this time of 
time of year, during the Passover time, uh, before, it was before Passover, but, but not much before Passover, this is what happened. That Satan entered into Judas. Now, um, Mrs. Weber, please read Job uh, 1, 6. Oh, okay. <clears throat> now, there was a day when the Son of God came to present, the sons of God, uh, came to present themselves before the Lord, and Satan came also among them. Okay, so here in Job 1 6, we have the sons of God, which in the last class we said that, you know, generally we, that, that refers to angels. In, in most cases, that's angels. Uh, if, not, if, if not all cases, that's angels. And along with the angels coming to present themselves, we have Satan as well. That's there. Uh, Tammy, read the next verse there. In Zechariah 3, 1 and 2. <coughs> and he showed me Joshua the high priest standing before the angel of the Lord, and Satan standing at his right hand to resist him. And the Lord said unto Satan, The Lord rebuke thee, O Satan, even the Lord that hath chosen Jerusalem rebuke thee. Is not this a brand plucked out of the fire? Angel, please read Matthew chapter 13, verse 19. Matthew 13, 19. <laughs> when any one heareth the word of the command, and understands it not, and comes to the wicked one, and catches away that which is sown in his heart, this is the seed which receives seed by the word of God. Now, he makes, this, he makes this comment on page uh, 326. He says, Satan is referred to in seven Old Testament books under different names. In the New Testament, he's referred to by all the writers and is mentioned in 19 books. Now, this doctrinal statement that's made here on page 326, according to the scriptures, there is, being, there is a being called the devil or Satan, a real being who is real existence. And so the fact, we start with the, the fact that he exists. We know the Bible tells us that he exists, and he's, he's, he exists because... If someone wants to deny that he exists, they also they want to deny the fact that salvation is needed. Ultimately, that's what that's what I think they're trying to trying to get at. The people that want to deny the existence of Satan, they want to deny the existence of hell, they, they perhaps even want to deny the, the existence of of heaven or of God. They don't want they don't want to have any accountability. They want to be have and people have different different reasons why they want to believe what they believe about the existence of Satan. If Satan uh, didn't exist, then uh, Jesus suffered on the cross for nothing. Yes, mm -hmm. right. That's right. That's right, Paul. And he makes he says on, on page uh, three twenty six he says it appears to be taught in the scripture that the devil was created perfect in his ways, a person of great beauty and brightness, and exalted in possession, in position, and honor. That as a result of pride of his own superiority. He sought the desire to himself, the worship due to God alone, and that in consequence of his sin, he degraded in person, position, and power, becoming the opponent of God and the enemy of man. So he's not necessarily a friend of man either. Satan. He wants, he wants to do what he can to bring humanity down. This is whatever. Well, uh, would that say that the angels have free will? Like, you know, we have free will on earth to be, to do mm -hmm. right or to sin. And what would the angel, would they just, if they're perfect, then how could he have sinned? Unless, I, I think he, unless God, God allowed him to. Too. What? Adam was perfect too. I think, I think the Well, yeah, but better, do you think he had a free will, the angels? I think the better word perhaps would be innocent. For Adam and for, for, the, uh, for the angels, um... No, I'm just asking. Yeah, I'm not trying to stir up a I would think. I would think. I would think for for um uh for man to be either were innocent and for the angels sinless. Sinless. Um, I mean, I know. I'm but they had the possibility to sin. I know he's using the word, word perfect, but, but like like you said, you know that that brings <laughs> these questions you just raised. Um, I think I think he had they had they had a will because yeah. because he said as we, in the Ezekiel passage I think it is I will right he did you know, he did yeah. he, used the, he used the very words That's I right. will I forgot that um, and so I think uh, there was there was a there they have a will a choice they'd be able to make a decision to choose uh, 
and they chose to, he chose along with other angels to rebel uh, with God. Now, as far as the, the current ability to choose, I think uh, they've, though the ones that did not choose to follow Satan, have chosen to follow God. Mm -hmm. You know, so it's um. But the but there are the passage of Ezekiel is um. Well, yes, I could go along with sure. uh, in Ephesians where it talks about we fight against uh, principalities and powers. So you have the good and the evil like there too. Yes. So, you know, but I. I, would, I don't know, but I would imagine that those that fell, fell, and like you said, and the rest that's remain have not changed their... Yes, they haven't. Yeah. Mm -mm. That's right. And then in the Ezekiel passage he mentions here, talks about uh, the king of Tyre um, is like a, a type or a representative of some sort of Satan himself, the king of Tyre. Now, as far as um, who Satan is, uh, page 227 it says, the book says, created perfect or or created sinless, uh, would be, again, he's using the word sinless, but, um, Bill, read, read Ezekiel 28, 12, please. It's kind of in that bigger passage, right? Oh, okay. Son of man, take up a uh, lamentation upon the king of Tyrus, and say unto him, Thus saith the Lord God, Thou sealest up the sum full of wisdom and Perfect in beauty. Now it's, he's, he makes his comp, comp uh, and point two. He says he sat upon the mountains as a director of worship. Um, Mr. Weber, Ezekiel twenty-eight fourteen, please. Kind of in that bigger passage, over verse fourteen. Okay. <clears throat> Thou art the anointed cherub that, that coveteth, and I have said thee so. I have said thee so. Thou was. Sorry, but I can't. I still don't it's a small story. Yeah, there's so many uh, verses. Yeah, I said this. So thou wast, that that was created. Am I at the right place? Yes, no. upon the mountain. upon the holy mountain of God, thou hast walked up and down in the midst of the stones of fire. Very good, and then yeah. Um, as far as his conduct is concerned, it's a, the passage that the book mentions sinless in conduct. Uh, Tammy, read 28.15, please. Thou was perfect in thy ways from the day thou was created till iniquity was found in thee. Now, his heart was lifted up with false ambition. and yes, I told, does, I'm sorry, it does uh, say perfect in the scripture. Okay. Perfect in thy ways. That okay. was, would be his behavior. Yes, that's right. It does. You're, you're right. It does say that. Um... His heart was lifted up in pride and false ambition. Jill, read um passage in Isaiah 14, uh, verses 12 to 17. How art thou formed from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? Um, uh, very interesting as far as who he really is, and um, we don't want to we want to rely upon what God can give us. He can give us the victory, give us deliverance over any dart that Satan will throw at us. Uh, his moral character was degraded. Um, 
he fell from this, this high position he was, and he came down. Um, Ezekiel 28.16, uh, Bill, read that, read that passage, please. Ezekiel 28.16. Ezekiel 28.16. By the multitude of thy merchandise, they have filled the midst of thee with violence, and thou hast sinned. Therefore I will cast thee as profane out of the mountain of God, and I will destroy thee, O covering cherub, from the midst of the stones of fire. Yeah, the idea of uh, his, his, his images are being puffed up in page 327. I was, that was um, one of the things that say, happened to Satan. He was puffed up. And um, the Apostle Paul in the Pastoral Epistles, according to Timothy, uh, he, he describes this, um, this condition as well in, about a, a pastor or a prospective pastor. In 1 Timothy 3 6, um, this is Weber, 1 Timothy 3 6, please. I've got to find it first. Okay. Page 2. Oh, here it is. Okay. Uh, not a novice, least being lifted up with pride, <coughs> he fall into the condemnation of the devil. I'm sorry, my voice is not. Oh, that's okay. Sorry, <coughs> I forgot my order. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, now, Lucifer's name, Lucifer, Daystar, um, it can never be. Uh, can, 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 this is referring to Satan. Um, at least that's um, as far as. Um, 328. 328, yes. Page 328. Now, he's got, he's got his poem in here by Milton. Um, Milton with some... Is that right about the day star, though? I thought that was a con something that was... Um, yeah, that may, that, may be, that may be controversial. With the, ver with the version. With the translation. Um, yes. Mm -hmm. I, I think we should put an X through that day star. Yeah, we, we need to. We need to cross that out. That's, that's right. We cross the cross the day star out. Um... And Milton is describing his uh, rebellion. Um, this, is, this is not scripture. This is a person, Milton, a, po a poet. Um, you know, he, he mentioned this, this poem here, Shakespeare. He's got, a, he's got some prose from Shakespeare, um, as well as far as describing Satan. It's a clearly Milton uh, had an idea, a concept of who Satan was. Shakespeare had a concept of who he was. I'm not sure if either of these men were born again Christians, but nonetheless, uh, the theology um, was true, whether they believed it or not. Um, in the doctrinal statement here, he mentions on page 328, he says, uh, Satan was created as an angel of God, of high rank and other possessions, other possession great beauty and brightness, a person, and being superior in power and wisdom, until iniquity was found in him, when he sought to assume the position and prerogatives of God. See, he was he displaced. He wanted to displace himself from where he was. He wanted to place himself above where God was. He wasn't content with the position of high rank and high authority that God had given him. He wanted to have more. And uh, ego maniac. Yes, that's right. Uh -huh. That's right. He wanted to have more. As far as uh, Satan's nature is concerned, uh, we have his personality. Um, we have, he mentions, there are personal pronouns used to reference Satan. Um, it's whose turn is it? Is it your turn, Tim, or your Jill's turn? Yes, okay. uh, Job 1 8, please. And, uh, and the Lord said unto Satan, Hast thou considered my servant Job, that there is none like him in the earth, a perfect and an upright man, one that feareth God and issueth evil? All right, and Jill, please uh, read Job uh, 2, verses 1 to 2. Again, there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord. <coughs> Satan also came, came also among them to present himself before the Lord. And the Lord said unto Satan, From whence thou come? Hmm. And he answered the Lord and said, Going to and fro in the earth, walking up and down in it. And as far as his, uh, his personal characteristics are concerned, um, we, um, we have the idea of, we already read the verse in uh, 1 Timothy 3.6, but his actions, as far as his actions are concerned, 
Um, they'll read the passage there in, in John chapter 8, verse 44. Ye are of your father the devil, and the lusts of your father ye will do. He was a murderer from the beginning, and a boon not in the truth, because there is no truth in him. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own, for he is a liar and the father of it. And Mrs. Weber, First Chronicles 21.1. And Satan stood up against Israel, and provoked David to number Israel. <coughs> we just had that, didn't we, on our reading? I think we did. I think we did. It, it, it's, it's a parallel passage here in First Chronicles. Oh, yeah. Parallel. I mean, we yeah, had it. Yeah, we did. Just, yeah. yeah. Uh, now notice, you know, the characteristics, you know, being a mur- he was a murderer, uh, the loss of your father, he's, he's talking about, this is the characteristic of Satan. Um, the characteristics of Satan. As far as his character is concerned, he's, he's crafty. Satan is crafty. Um, his strategies. In 2 Corinthians 2, 11, came. Lest Satan should get an advantage of us, for we are not ignorant of his devices. And so we don't want to have Satan have an advantage. We don't want to have him winning having the victory over us. Um, he says on page uh, 329, he says, The devil has many subtle devices of which we should not be ignorant. Uh, he's got strategies, he has wiles as well. Uh, Jill, read um, Ephesians 6, 11 and 12, please. So, the idea of, of the, the, this, this gives a clue of a spiritual battle, a spiritual battle that's taking place. It's not, it's not, a, not, a, not a physical battle, it's a spiritual battle. I mean, we talked about, um, Tammy, go ahead. Can I ask you a question? Please do. What's the difference between a, a strategy and a while? Um, I mean, I know those are words that are used in the King James, but I'm just trying to understand the distinction. I, I think we have one is a, a, um, a technique of attack. I mean, the strategy? There, yeah, yeah, the strategy. And the other one is um, is kind of goes along with that. It's parallel with that. It's a, it's a, it's a, um, a kind of under a sub sub thing. Probably it's more hidden. The wild. One is one is more open. The other one's more hidden. It's more like more a subtle. deceit. Yes, deceit right. That's right. Jill, subtle. Yeah, more subtle. Mm-hmm. Okay. Right. So. Uh, Yeah, let me see the next verse. Um, let's go. Go read the next verse there, please. Ephesians four fourteen. Yes, uh huh. That we henceforth be no more children, tossed to and fro, and carried about with every wind of doctrine, by the slight of men and cunning craftiness, whereby lie in wait to deceive. All right. And as far as his power is concerned. Um, he is, he, he is not, he's not all-powerful, but he still has some power. He has elements of power. Uh, Mr. Weber, read 2 Thessalonians 2, 9, please. 9 and 10? Uh, probably in uh, the... Okay. <clears throat> Even him whose coming is after the working of Satan, with all power and signs and lying wonders, <clears throat> and with all deceivableness of unrighteousness, in them that perish, because they receive not the love of the truth, they that they might be saved. As far as this doctrinal statement is concerned, he says um, on on page uh, two thirty nine says, any personality, and character, Satan is the embodiment and expression of evil, which we want to avoid. We want to avoid evil, evil in all forms. We want to put away evil from us. I mean, we think of, of the example, I mean, there's countless examples. I mean, if, if, if David, you know, what if, he, he was a human being, so he was susceptible to, to the temptations, the evils, the wiles, the strategies of what the devil was doing. And um, he fell, he fell in sin. He killed somebody, and then he stole, stole some of his wife, and did things... 
you know, that's just one, one, one small aspect of things he had struggled with because he had plenty of problems with. But um, we have to understand that he is that he's evil. That Satan is an evil being. He's an evil being. Now, as far as his possession, in uh, Jude 9, let's see, whose turn is it to read here? When, uh, is it Tammy or Miss Weber? Who's who reads I just next? read, so I guess it's Tammy, go read Jude 9, please. Is that Jude 1 9? Yeah, Jude 1 9. Oh, that's all right. There's only one chapter there anyway. Now, here we go. Yet Michael the Archangel, when contending with the devil, he disputed about the body of Moses. Durst not bring against him a railing accusation, but said, The Lord rebuked thee. He says, he says so the position of Satan was so exalted as to make him exempt from criticism and condemnation by his fellow creatures. As far as, you know, he's got uh, his fellow creatures, that means the other angels are, are saying, you know, the Lord rebuke, rebuke him. And so when we are fighting the battle, when we are doing spiritual warfare, we have to understand it's the God, we have to rely upon God to do the rebuking of, of the devil. You know, he's, he's the prince and the power of the air. If we, uh, Jill, read the verse there in Ephesians 2.2, 2, please. Where in, in time past you walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, <coughs> spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience. And uh, Bill, read Matthew 12, 26. Could you please. explain that verse a little bit? Sure. As far as Ephesians 2, 2. Uh, oh. Ephesians 2, 2. Yeah, so we have... We, we have what, what's happening with Ephesians 2, 2? You know, the, pre, the previous verse talks about us being dead in trespass and sin being quickened. You know, God quickening us. And it talks about the um, how positionally that we, the Christian, the believer, was walking. How we how they were living according to the course of this world. That that's be... that's the, the direction that the when we were lost. Right, okay. When we were dead in trespass and sin. Okay. When we were spiritually blind, this is the condition we were in according to the according right. in other words, the same way as the prince of the power of the air would want us to live. Uh, yeah. and so that's we were we were and we were lost before we were saved. Right. We were living exactly like the devil wanted us to live. Before we were saved. Before we were saved. Okay. Before we were saved. Okay, I got yes. it. Got yeah. it? Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Good. Um, Matthew twelve twenty six, And if Satan cast <clears throat> out Satan, he is divided against himself. How shall then his kingdom stand? And then, uh, Tammy, you want to, um, or Jill, uh, read twenty six eighteen, please. Okay. Acts 26, 18. Mm -hmm. He says on page uh, 230, rather 330, he makes this, uh, this statement. He says, um, you know, he talks about him being the, the prince of the world. Um, he, he says um, in John 1430, Tammy, John 1430, please read John 1430. Hereafter I will not talk much with you, for the prince of this world cometh and it hath uh, nothing in me. Now, near the bottom of page 330, he says, To anyone who will study the ruling principles of commercial life, of political life, of social life, and above all, international relations, it will be abundantly clear that the devil is the one who is the master of the present order of things. Uh, so he's, he's, looking, he's giving these different examples from, from, uh, from industries and from, from the world, how the devil... Is, is kind of controlling all these all these different things in, in the world. Now this doctrinal statement, he makes a, the doctrinal statement on page on page on page three thirty. He says Satan 
though the pose from his high position to which he was originally appointed still holds a place of recognized power and authority. Now, as far as his present habitation, um, his present habitation. Mom, I'm going to read Job uh, 1 6, please. You have, you have a copy of. Uh, well, that's the one's the place, sir. And on for page uh, page three, I think it is. Page uh, four. Page four, thank you. Yes, we did. I'm sorry about that for disturbing the whole. Line one thirty five. Job 1 6. Now there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord, and Satan came also among them. And Job, read Revelation uh, 12 10, please. Job 12 10. Job 12 10. Now the, the scripture says um, to teach for some reason, this is from page 331, for some reason, uh, which is not revealed in scripture, Satan is permitted to have access in the presence of God. He appears there in the capacity of the slanderer and the accuser of the brethren, which accuseth them before our God day and night. Hence, the necessity, the, the, probably the necessity of intercessory work of Christ. So when Satan's there accusing the brethren, Christ intercedes on our behalf. When he there accuses us of wrongdoing, accuses us of transgressing, for transgressing, the Lord Jesus Christ is there to intercede for us. And say, hold on, that all the, that's paid for by my blood, Christ would say. As far as the inhabitants of the heavenly realm, um, we have to understand the fact that we are have a spiritual battle we're, we're encountering. It's not obviously you know we have back um, in the, back in World War One, World War Two rather, we had the, had the, the hot war with, uh, and then we had what was known as Cold War. Well, we have a spiritual war that was going on from the beginning. It's not it's not a hot war. It's not a spiritual war. It's probably it's not a not a hot war, not a cold war, but it's a spiritual war, uh, and so. Which is, which is far greater than any type of war we have on this earth. So if we look at Ephesians 6, 1, 6, 11 to 12, Bill, 6, 11 to 12, please. Put on the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of darkness of this world, against spiritual wit wickedness in high places. He makes this observation on page 331. Sa this satan infested realm is to be the future heritage and home of the church. Casting on the Satan will probably be contemporaneous with the rapture. And let's look at Revelation 12, 7 and 9. And we'll also look at 1 Thessalonians 4, 16 and 17. Revelation 12, 7 and 9. Um, you want me to read that? Yes, please. Uh -huh. <coughs> uh, and there was war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon, and the dragons fought with his the dragons fought and his angels, and prevailed not. Neither was their place found any more in heaven. And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceived the whole world. He was cast out cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. And the Tammy, 1 Thessalonians 4, 16 and 17. But the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. All right, so there's, there's a, an activity that Satan has upon the earth. Um, 
in uh, you know in Job one seven, Mom. Job one seven, please. Job one seven. Yes. And the Lord said unto Satan, Whence comes thou? Then Satan answered the Lord and said, From going to and fro in the earth, and from walking up and down in it. And so, please read um, First Peter five eight. First Peter five eight. Okay, so we have to be vigilant. We have to know that that their adversary, pardon me, vigilant. Be vigilant, pardon me. Be vigilant. I'm not. Uh, we got to be vigilant, <laughs> vigilant because because the, uh, our adversary is coming. He's walking around. He wants to devour us. And he says he's a lion. Uh, or lions, uh, very friendly uh, animals. Oh. No, they're they're not friendly animals. Um, and so we. We want to be kind. Of, Satan is likened to an animal of a lion, and so we want to beware. He's a roaring lion. He's a roaring lion. Mm -hmm. Yes, a roaring lion. Roaring, they roar right before they eat their dinner. Yes, they do. So um, um, we have to look at this this doctrinal statement here on, on page three thirty one. He says, "Satan, though no not omnipresent, has access to all places, making the heavenlies his abode, but the earth is a." Especially, sense seen of his activities. Now, as far as his work is concerned, with original sin, which um, um we look at um Ezekiel twenty-eight fifteen. Um, thou was perfect in thy ways from the day that thou was created, till iniquity was found in thee. And he makes this observation on page uh, three thirty-one. He says sin was not a creation but an origination. It came into existence by the aid of what which had prior existence, namely personality and the power of free choice, but created this being not as the devil, but as a holy angel who originated sin through disobedience and transformed himself into the wicked devil which he is today. So he chose to rebel, he chose to disobey God, can he? So does that mean that he created sin? I mean, if, he, if he's the originator? Yeah, in a certain sense, you know, that would be, be correct. Right. He wanted to be like the most high God. He wanted to create something. Well, he did. It was he did. nothing good. No, it wasn't, wasn't good. It wasn't good. That's right. Uh, as far as um, he originated sin in the universe, and he also originated sin in the race. That is, with the human race. Uh, Genesis 3.13. Can you tell me to read that? Yes, please read it. Genesis 3.13. And the Lord God said unto the woman, What is this that thou hast done? And the woman said, The serpent beguiled me, and I did eat. Alright. And so, and that we have original, we have the initial sin uh, that can be traced. He says here, Through... Though, though not directly, yet indirectly to Satan. See that that's where the initial sin is, is traced to original sin. Uh, Tammy, read Second Corinthians. Uh, yes, Miss Weber. Um, when he, when she said, "A certain beguiled me," it sounded like she's uh, saying, "Well, I didn't really know what he was doing, and I got." Now, is that did she actually know that she was committing sin, or was she being tricked into it, or? You know, because I thought that Adam was the first one. And yeah, she was sin. deceived. Eve she was, was deceived. deceived yeah. So mm -hmm. that wouldn't be considered as uh, the same as what Adam did. Right, it's different. Yeah. That's right, it's different. Yeah. It is different. Um, and Tammy, read Second Corinthians 11, 3, please. But I fear lest by any means, as the serpent beguiled Eve through his subtlety, so your mind should be corrupted from the simplicity that is in Christ. And so we shouldn't be let it allow ourselves to be to be get, to be beguiled by Satan. Uh, he's also responsible for the cause of suffering. Uh, Satan is. Um, let's look at Acts ten thirty eight. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with His power, who went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil, for God was with him. 
And then Joe, please read uh, Luke 13, 16, please. Alright, and so we have, uh, he says in this page, uh, 332, he says, in the final analysis, Satan is the ultimate source of suffering, because the ultimate source of all sin. Uh, its primary, primal cause, he is also immediately responsible for many individual cases of sickness and disease, as shown in numerous New Testament accounts. He's the cause of death. Um, Hebrews 2.14. Bill? For as much then as the children are partakers of flesh and blood, he also himself likewise took part of the same, that through the death uh, he might destroy him that had power of death, that is, the devil. Now he makes this interesting comment on uh, page 332. He says, Satan seems to have the right with special permission to use the mighty weapon of death. It is true, however, that Jesus Christ at the cross wrestled this weapon of death out of Satan's hands and with it won from his glorious victory. Colossians 2.15. Please, Colossians 2.15. Sorry, where am I here? Oh, here it is. And having <coughs> spoiled principalities and powers, he made a show of them openly, triumphing over them in it. Trump, so, Trump, here are The triumph over them. Triumphing over them. You see, he alerts the evil. Uh, Tammy, read 1 Thessalonians 3 5. For this cause, when I should no longer forbear, but I sent to know your faith, lest by some means the tempter have tempted you, and our labor be in vain. Saint also ensnares man, he ensnares them. Uh, my first uh, ten, second Timothy two twenty six, please. Second. Okay. That they may recover themselves out of the snare of the devil who are taken captive by him at his will. And so he lays snares so they make be made captive, taken captive. He he causes uh, as far as wicked thoughts and purposes. Um, uh, Jill, read um, John thirteen two, please. And suffered being ended to death, <coughs> having now put into the heart of Judas Iscariot, son of son, to betray him. And then Bill, read Acts uh, five three, please. But Peter said, Ananias, why hath Satan filled thine heart to lie to the Holy Ghost and to keep back part of the price of the land. He makes, he makes his comment on page 333. He says, Satan seems to have the power of mental suggestion, which in individual becomes auto-suggestion, and which, unless altered and hindered by the word of the Spirit of God, will also in him be expressed by word and action. Satan also takes possession of men, which we, we looked at that earlier today with, with Judas. Well, let's uh, look at the, the passage in Ephesians 4.27. Ephesians 4.27. Okay. Uh, Ephesians 4.27. Neither give place to the devil. Is that right? Yes, we don't we don't want to give place to the devil. Don't, don't, don't want to give him any any regard for anything. He blinds the eyes of men. Uh, 2 Corinthians 4 4. In whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. He makes this, um, this statement on page, on page 333. He says, Unbelief of the truth seems to be the same as a special invitation to Satan to bring in the darkness of error and falsehood. He blinds the minds of unbelieving men to present them from, rather, to present them from receiving 
the light of the gospel. It wants to prevent them. I think that's supposed to be prevent. Yeah, it's supposed to be prevent. You're right. <coughs> You've seen the light of the gospel. It's a typo. He is. What does that say? He, um, Quarter after four. he dissipates the truth. He, uh, he, he pushes away. Uh, Mark 5, rather, Mark 4.15, please. Mark 4.15, these are they by the wayside, where the word is sown. But when they have heard, Satan cometh immediately, to take away the word that was sown in their hearts. So Satan, as he says in page 3.33, Satan is the arch-thief or robber of a medium of truth that is a sole link for establishing a relationship between God and man. He takes it away. He uh, also produces evildoers. Uh, Matthew uh, thirteen twenty-five. Jill, Matthew thirteen twenty-five. A well that's left his enemy king, so tears among the wheat <coughs> went his way. The, hey, the, world, the good city are the children of the kingdom. The tears and the tears of the children also the wicked ones. Enemy has built him devil, harvest is the end of the world, and the reapers are the angels. So Satan serves tares in God's field. He mixes his children up with gods, both in the field of the world, and, pardon me, and in the, vis and in the, in the visible church. Satan also energizes his ministers. This is the ministers of evil. He, he energizes them. In 2 Corinthians 11, verses 13 to 15. Can we read that? Yes, please. Uh, who should read it? Uh, let me see. Joel, I mean, it's Joel. I, yeah. I mean, what, Bill? For such are false apostles, deceitful workers, transforming themselves into the apostles of Christ. <clears throat> and no marvel, for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. Therefore, it is no great thing if his ministers also be transformed as the ministers of righteousness, whose end shall be according to their works. He, he makes this comment, he says, um, uh, Much of the apostasy of the 20th century and also the 21st century can be ascribed to the emissaries of Satan, and the interest in white and black magic, as well as the per pervasive presence of the occult prop provides contemporary evidence of what of which Paul speaks in 2 Corinthians. Now, Satan, as he says, he opposes God's servants. He works in opposition to God's servants. Uh, please read 1 Thessalonians 2.18. Uh, wherefore we would have come unto you, even I, Paul, once and again, but Satan hindered us. And another thing, he resists them. Uh, Tim, Zechariah 1 3. 3 1. 3 1, yes, thank you. Uh, and he showed me Joshua, the high priest, standing before the angel of the Lord, and Satan standing in his right hand to resist him. He prophets them. 2 Corinthians 2 12 7, please. And lest I should be exalted above measure, through the abundance of the revelations, there was given to me a thorn in the flesh. The messenger of Satan to buffet me, lest I should be exalted above measure. For this thing I besought the Lord thrice, and it might depart from me. And he said, My grace is sufficient for thee, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Most gladly, therefore, would I rather glory in my infirmities, that the power of Christ may rest upon me. He makes this comment, page 334, says, Satan buffets, resists, and hinders God's servants in every possible way. For God's grace is sufficient to give them the victory. And so another thing that Satan does, he tests the believers. He tests the believers. Jill, read Luke 22, 31, please. And the Lord said, Simon, Simon, behold, Satan has desired to have you, that he may sift you as me. <laughs> and then he accuses, he accuses the believers. Uh, they'll read um, Revelation 12, 9 and 10. And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil, and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world. He was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. And I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, Now is come salvation and strength, and the 
kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ. For the accuser of our brethren is cast down, which accused them before our God day and night. He energizes the, uh, will energize the Antichrist. 2 Thessalonians 2, 9-10. That's like a little bit too, I intend. Even him <coughs> whose coming is after the working of Satan, with all power and signs and lying wonders, and with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish, because they receive not the love of the truth, that they may be saved. He makes this, this doctrinal statement, page uh, 335, and he says, The ministry of the Satan is multifold, including its in scope, the opposition of God and the frustration of His purposes, as well as the oppression, affliction, and temptation of man. As far as uh, the destiny of Satan is concerned, um, he is cursed already. He's already cursed. Uh, Tammy, read Genesis 3, 14 and 15, please. And the Lord God said unto the serpent, Because thou hast done this, Thou art cursed above all cattle, and above every beast of the field. Upon thy belly shalt thou go, and dust shalt thou eat all the days of thy life. And I will put enmity between thee and the woman, and between thy seed and her seed. It shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. And then, Mom, read uh, Isaiah 65.25. Isaiah 65.25. The wolf and the lamb shall feed together. And the lion shall eat straw like the bullock, and dust shall be on the serpent's meat, shall be the serpent's meat. They shall not hurt nor destroy in all my holy mountain, saith the Lord. And he says that in, also he should be treated as, like a, as a defeated, conquered enemy. Uh, John, Colossians 2.15, Jill. Colossians uh, 2.15, please. Having willed the principalities and the powers, he made a show of them openly, triumphing over them in it. He's going to be cast out of heaven. Uh, Bill, Revelation 12, 9. And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world. He was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. And in the millennium, he'll be confined to the abyss for 1,000 years. Um, this is Rubber, Revelation 12. 20 verses 1 to 3. So if I get through it. And I saw an angel come down from heaven, having the key of the bottomless pit and a great chain in his hand. And he laid hold on the dragon, that old serpent, which is the devil, and Satan, and bound him a thousand years, and cast him into the bottomless pit, and shut him up, and set a seal upon him, that he should deceive the nations no more, till the thousand years should be fulfilled. And after that, he must be loosed a little season. And then, read the next verse, Tammy, please. Revelation 27 to 9. Yes. <laughs> and when the thousand years are expired, Satan shall be loosed out of his prison, and shall go out to deceive the nations which are in the four quarters of the earth, Gog and Magog, to gather them together to battle the number of whom is as the sand of the sea. And they went up on the breadth of the earth, and compassed the camp of the saints about, and the beloved city. And fire came down from God out of heaven, and devoured them. And so during the, after the millennium, he'll be released, and then ultimately cast into the lake of fire. Revelation 12, Revelation 20, verse 10, please. Revelation 20, verse 10. Yes. Uh, and the devil that deceived them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone, where the beast and the false prophet are, and shall be tormented day and night forever and ever. In this doctrinal statement, he says on page 336, he says, Satan is under a perpetual curse. His conquest was secured at the cross. He is destined to be cast out of the heavenlies, confined in the abyss, and finally consigned to the lake of fire. Um, as far as the believer's course in relation to Satan, uh, redemption rights to be claimed. To claim redemption rights. Hebrews 2.14, Joel.
that he might destroy him that had the power of death, that is the death. He, he makes this comment on page 336. He says, The death of the Christ includes in its provision not only substitution for the believer's penalty for sin, but also representation for the believer's na nature of sin. And um, we'll read Romans 8, verses 3 to 4. Please. For what the law could not do, in that it was weak through the flesh, God sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh and for sin condemned sin in the flesh that the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us who walk not after the flesh but after the spirit and we've already talked about the armor of God we're supposed to put the armor of God on uh, to be, so we can be equipped uh, we have strict self control to be maintained Let's look at Ephesians 4.27, please. Ephesians 4.27. Okay, I'm blinded. I must be lost. Page 9. Page 9, yes. I'm oh, blinded. Okay. 3.30, yes. Ephesians. Oh, that's so little. Neither give place to the devil. Yeah, we're not supposed to give place to the, to the devil. Tammy, read Galatians uh, 5.22 and 23, please. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance, Against such there is no law. And, um, First Peter 5 8. Be sober, be diligent, because your adversary, the devil, is as roaring lion, walking about seeking whom he may devour. And then, Jill, mm -hmm. uh, read the next passage there, please. Well, I lost First Peter 5 8. Oh, um, oh, you know what? First, we got done reading First Peter 5 8. That's, is that it? Yeah, then you read Second Corinthians 2 11. I'm sorry, Second Corinthians 2 11. Yes, yeah, so we have to have resistance is to be made. Um, in, in James 4 7. Though, James 4 7. Submit yourselves therefore to God. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. Alright, so we have to submit ourselves to God so the devil will flee to us. He makes this, this diagnosis statement. The believers take an attitude of confidence toward his adversary, the devil, relying on God's provision and power through Christ for victory over him. So, uh, Joe, what are some of your thoughts or observations about this, uh, this section on, on the devil? Um, well, I think that the devil is a That's right. Yeah. That's right. Mom, go ahead, Mom. What's some thoughts you have there? So, thoughts for the day? Thoughts for the day, yes. Okay. Uh, I'm sorry I was late, but I had come. It's okay. I'm glad you came. Um, I had some thoughts. I know, oh, Satan. Here, this, I, I was interested in this on page 332. Satan incites men to sin and women to. He is so arranged 
He so arranges times and controls events and circumstances as to make the greatest possible appeal to the sinful tendencies of man or woman. He is the tempter. <coughs> and that's where we have to be careful uh, because we never know what a satanic, like as a roaring lion, mm, he's yes. going to pounce on you. You don't even know he's there. And yes. he's inciting and keeping, mm -hmm. arranging events and controls, as we said. Then there was a scripture verse I liked. Uh, I'll find it. Should be. I didn't, I didn't hear the singular again. Don't do this. I don't know if I can find the scripture verse right now. I can't find it right now. Okay. Where was that other one? This was here on page uh, 332 near the end. Okay. And I wish I had been paying more attention to the scripture verse. Oh, that is interesting. <coughs> Before all those uh, 1 Thessalonians 3, 5 and all those verses, I wish I had mm -hmm. paid attention to see what that was. I... Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> Tammy, how about, uh, how, how about you? Well, I just think it's a good reminder that, you know, the oppression that a Christian may feel from, um, you know, spiritual oppression that they may feel um, is, is combated by our, you know, just inter, you know, praying and yes, the yes. intercessory work of Christ. Right. Um, because <clears throat> we have all that we need in order to overcome. Mm -hmm. yes. but we have to, we have to understand that that's, that's his tactic. Right. It is. Mm -hmm. That's right. How about you, Ms. Weber? Well, after hearing all that and reading all those verses and all, I, I really think that I am neg negligent. I'm not thinking enough that mm -hmm. uh, Satan is like a roaring lion seeking him any power. Mm -hmm. And it just, I hope I can remember to be more diligent in uh, different things that mm -hmm. you do, especially with the tongue, you know, that God yeah. would keep me uh, away from sinful mm -hmm. words or, uh, I mean, like, I don't mean I go around right. sitting mm -hmm. all the time, but there are times when you say something you shouldn't have said mm -hmm. or, or unkind with your uh, with your mm -hmm. mouth and tongue. So that would be uh, most prevalent in my mind right now. Mm -hmm. Right, and go. Pretty much the same thing. Okay. All right. <laughs> that was very Thank good. You. Really. Yes, good. Good study today. Yeah. Um, anyone else have any more thoughts or comments uh, about anything that we've just talked about or discussed? What did I miss? What what one or two things? Uh, did I miss? Jill, can you give a quick summary of what uh, what she missed? You still there, Jill? Uh, oh, yeah, I'm sorry. And give a quick summary from my mother what she missed. She came in uh, in the middle of class there. Oh. Um, hmm. We're talking about uh, Satan, his nature, and um, what he's done to the fact that he's, he's uh, active in the world, his, his existence. <coughs> You know, how, how he was originally, you know, created <coughs> to be <coughs> perfect and all, all beautiful and like the most beautiful angel and everything. But then he, uh, he, he was being prideful. He wanted to be like the most high. He wanted to be like God himself. <coughs> then that's where his sin crept in. He, he, he you know, created sin by, by his pride. And, um, you know, the Lord um, cast him down. Um, you know, it's just all the um, other angels that followed him. I can't remember if that was part mentioned here or not, mm -hmm. the other angel that, the evil angel that followed him and everything. But, you know, his character, he, he employed that strategy to um, involve the more subtle things that can, like, smear us if we're not careful. And he's like a pure, like, expression and, like, like total embodiment of, uh, of evil, <clears throat> but he continues to be also the prince of this world and the god of this age. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. <clears throat> Yes. Good. All right, Joel, thank you for the summary. Any more thoughts or comments anyone might have? Right. Well, please, uh, please close your prayer. Father in heaven, we thank you for uh, all that you teach us. Uh, we thank you for all of these verses that we've been studying uh, so that we can understand the nature of Satan, uh, which also uh, helps us to understand the nature of our sinfulness and uh, our desire to overcome the, uh, this sin in our daily battles. 
In uh, Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Amen.